we've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right, Jared. How are you doing today? You know, um, lots of sun. Got lots of sun. Oh. And uh, uh, <laughs> that's the complete opposite here. We are now four straight days of rain. Well, that was us earlier. Opposite. That was us earlier this week. And congratulations, Sun Card and others. Uh, you, you have got your weather talk. Congratulations, <laughs> those of you who enjoy that so much. But God, we're not here to talk about weather. We're here to talk about recruiting. This is an episode of Buckeye Building Blocks, uh, one of our uh, sub shows here at the Buckeye Sleepcast. Um, we did a mock class just a couple weeks ago, uh, maybe two or three mm-hmm. weeks ago. Um, I am actually here for the weather talk only. Well, you can bounce then. We're we're done. <laughs> Thanks, Galen. <laughs> Um, the, yeah, so we did a bucket building blocks episode. We did a mock class. Uh, it was like two or three weeks ago. Um, and since then Ohio state has picked up five commitments. Uh, so we're going to look at those five guys, um, burgers and fries. We're going to look at those five guys and, uh, talk about how they fit in. Did I have them in my mock class or not? How's my mock class doing? I'm not going to be up. I'm not doing a brand new mock class. Uh, I won't be doing that today. Uh, but uh, just uh, doing a roundup, a bit of a recruiting roundup since the last time we talked recruiting, since the last time we did a building blocks episode. So, Kyle, uh, where do we want to start? Well, yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to backtrack a few weeks here. Uh, we got five names here. We got five names we're going to get us caught up with and then talk a little bit about the current state of the 2023 class and maybe we dig into that a little bit more and maybe some notes of some other teams and how they're doing recruiting wise so far the 2023 um, class. So we're we're going to start off with our first of our three defensive backs <laughs> we're going yeah. to talk about. <laughs> how they went back to back to back um, commits. Uh, towards the end of June, beginning of July here. So we'll first start off with Kyan Lee. We met, we mentioned Lee in the uh, in the past here. I believe he was in our um, in our recruiting um, mock talk from yeah our mock from a few weeks ago here. He absolutely and was. I had him scored as a nine on the certainty mark. So like in if we're playing Jared was right, Jared was wrong. Jared got this one. Good job, Jerry. Yeah. I like talking about myself yeah. in the third person. Um, I, I one, one think of, he was one of, one of the guys who I had as like a, not only am I certain he's going to commit, I'm certain he's going to commit soon. So I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and toot my own horn on this one. Cause Oh boy, do I have some misses coming up? So I'm going to take this victory <laughs> while I got it. Yeah. One of the top defensive backs uh, ranked uh, according to the composite, the 18th best defensive back in the country. And uh, following that, I don't think we talked about him at all. Uh, Calvin Simpson Hunt, who was I originally did. a, a he, he was originally a Texas Tech commit, flipped to Ohio State uh, on June thirtieth here, um, which gives the second of the three defensive backs that Ohio State got. Uh, so yeah, I don't Calvin 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 is the 22nd best defensive back in the country um coming out of the state of Texas. Yeah, both of these guys according to 24/7 are marked as quote unquote defensive backs. Um I would make no mistake about the fact that they will at least come to Ohio State as corners. Now Ohio State has moved corners to safety in the past, so I'm not who who knows where they eventually end up. But these guys are absolutely going to show up to Ohio State as cornerbacks. Um, so don't don't think otherwise as far as that's concerned. Um, I don't typically unless it's unless it's a quarterback or like a. I can you can't make me do that. Gangland says. Meh. Um, the. uh Oh, sorry. What was I saying? Shoot. Lost my train of thought. The uh, corners. Yeah, their corners coming in. The 
when I do a mock class, I okay, that's what I was saying. Unless they're a quarterback, or unless it's like a like a real hyped, like a real followed situation, so I very, very rarely predict a flip into the class. I've done it before. I've did it with a quarterback. I think in the just in the last mock, I think that was the only that was the only person in the mock who I had flipping. Um, so I, I, unless I feel I don't, I will not typically put a put a flip into the mock. So I will give myself a little bit of leeway on that one. Um, but yeah, uh, from Waxahachie, Texas, uh, Calvin Simpson Hunt, uh, as Kyle said, flips away from Texas Tech, top two hundred player, four star corner. Um, I think this is a great pickup for Ohio State, uh, especially coming right off of the back of Kay and Lee. Um, as, as Kyle said, it was just a few days after. Um, two two guys who are absolutely going to probably need to add some add some meat to the frame, but incredibly athletic. Um, and you know they'll come in as freshmen. Obviously they'll 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 get they'll they'll get their body by Mick before before it's all said and done, but. Yeah. Um, as Kyle said, two great pickups at cornerback right in a row. But where are we done yet, Kyle? No, we, we got a um, we got a Jermaine Matthews um, in, in Ohio State's backyard. Well, kind of their backyard uh, down in Cincinnati over at um, Winton Woods High School. Um, projected as a well, projected as an athlete, more so going to be playing the, um, on the defensive back position there i would uh, say very corner. athletic very yep corner very athletic uh prospect here uh i think he'll fit in really well with the um with the corner group yeah as kyle said like a very very athletic player again maybe a bit undersized as far as any of that goes um but uh, again not not a real concern from my perspective as far as you know like i said body mass is concerned um i did absolutely have matthews uh excuse me no i didn't yes i did no no yes i did yes i did you have to go all the way over i didn't have him in april i did have him in june um so i had him in the i had him in the june mock i did not have him in the april mock but i did have him in the june mock um, and mm-hmm. again, I had him as a as a player who was going to commit, who I expected to commit um, along with Lee. So another guy I had with a high confidence score. I think about the time we did that mock, I think it was basically down to Ohio State and Cincinnati. And, you know, Cincinnati is making a lot of progress. I understand they'll be in the Big 12 here soon. Um, I think that that program's heading in an amazing direction. The coaching staff is doing an amazing job down there, but we're not at a point yet where Ohio State's going to miss any one-on-one battles against Cincinnati at this point. Um, Cincinnati doesn't beat Ohio State on recruits. Yeah, exactly. It's it's like yeah. the Urban Meyer story of him telling a kid who was down to Ohio state and West Virginia. He says, we don't recruit against West Virginia. Are you in or are you out? And he was in. Uh, so, it, it, you know, again, I mean, I don't really mean any disrespect to Cincinnati. Cause I, again, I have a lot of respect for what Fick is doing down there, but Ohio state yeah. doesn't recruit. He later transferred to WVU. He may, he may have, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it with all due respect to all of the talented coaches and the great program they're building down there, Ohio state is not losing recruiting battles of Cincinnati. No, no. I uh, speaking of, uh, earlier saying need to put some meat on those bones. Uh, <laughs> uh, next guy here definitely has some meat on those bones there. Uh, miles Walker. Yeah. Miles Walker is somebody that, Probably haven't really heard too much about. No, it was not, <laughs> uh, was not in my mock, um, was not even in my spreadsheet. I keep a spreadsheet nah. of these players. Wasn't even in the spreadsheet. Yeah. So that's, that's, you'll, you'll that's look how at him and, you'll, unexpected you'll, you'll at him. this was for me personally. Yeah. You'll look at him and uh, be like, why, why is this a big, big deal? It's a three star, yeah. barely in the top 500 here. 38th best 
offensive tackle in the country. Why, why, why is this a big deal? Well, there, there's a lot, there's a lot of, um, he's a, he's a very athletic offensive lineman who has a lot of upside. And if you listen to any, anybody who's been talking about him, he has some, he has some pretty um, good comparisons to some, um, some other Buckeye players that are currently on the team. Yeah, I was reading um, Mark Givler's write up because I because again, like I was legitimately caught completely off guard here. So I was, I was reading Mark Givler's uh, over at Buckeye Scoop, um, and I think he was drawing a lot of comparisons to Zen Mikowski, um as far as you know, a bit of a project player, but with a lot of upside, like he's just kind of a raw talent sort of player. Again, Kyle, as Kyle pointed out, you know, six, six, two eighty five, Fantastic. Uh, and by all reports, athletic is all hell. Um, an incredibly athletic player who just kind of naturally does a lot of the things that a offensive tackle is supposed to do as far as his knee bend and his, athletic ability to get to the second level and, and all of that. Um, again, this is not a player who you're going to expect to start in year one or probably even year two, um, but could be a huge asset for Ohio state down the, down the wire or excuse me, down the line. Um, so, and I, and one of the things I was struggling with when I was putting together my mock class uh, a few weeks ago was finding another offensive tackle. I'm almost certain I even said it in the show where I think I um, line wire, no real difference. Yeah. It's just, that's one's the actual phrase. And the other one was something I'd said. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, when I was going through the uh, again, I'd have to go back and listen to it, but I'm pretty sure I said something along the lines of, I included like an offensive tackle who I didn't think Ohio state had a real great shot at, but I just didn't kind of, I didn't know who to put in at that spot. I didn't really know who that next, cause they, cause I, one of the things I said a dozen times in that show is Ohio state needs an additional offensive tackle, not a, might be a tackle, might be a guard guy, not a offensive lineman with a position to be determined to be determined later guy. Ohio state needed another bona fide, absolute, no questions asked offensive tackle. And I really just Absolutely. didn't know who that was at that time. And it turns out the, the answer is miles Walker. And again, this is not a five-star prospect. This is not someone who, he's not Paris Johnson Jr. Paris Johnson Jr., you did everything you could to get him on the field as soon as possible. And that's probably not the case here, and that's okay. That's absolutely okay. Uh, Ohio State's not going to need an offensive tackle, a freshman offensive tackle, starting as a freshman when Miles Walker's a freshman, or probably even a sophomore. Uh, yep. But they they still absolutely need like a dedicated offensive tackle beyond that. And also depth for that matter, because especially, you know, when it comes to Walker's second year might be in the two deep, if he is as moldable and as, as much upside, if he like, if he fulfills that upside that the coaches believe they see in him, then he could be in the two deep as a second year player. Um, I think that's probably best case scenario, but again, yep. we're talking about a guy who might be a huge contributor with a little bit of development. I trust their evaluation. I hope so. I mean, this is a new, you know, it's new, new offensive line coach at Ohio state. Um, and like, as far as the recruiting goes, cause one of the, I mean, the reason let's not say one of the reasons, the reason why coach stud was, you know, retired was that he just, he was not getting it done on the recruiting trail anymore. Whatever that is that allows a coach to recruit, he lost it. And I, and yep. that, that's a thing that happens, but, and, and the recruiting has not been fixed yet, but that's not a huge surprise. Uh, yeah. How do you do fellow kids? Indeed. Um, it's not a huge surprise, but 
because especially with all offensive tackles or sometimes like quarterbacks, like I said, especially offensive tackles, you can't show up and fix the recruiting in one year. Uh, it's a thing where you, the recruiting happens quickly and early. Um, so you, you, I don't think we can really judge the recruiting class being done by Coach Fry this year as much as it is the who he can bring in in 2024 when you get a full you know, when he's there for essentially the full recruiting cycle. Um, but if we're judging it based on this year, you know, Ohio State is once again getting project players as offensive tackles, which is the only only position on the team where they're getting project players. Um, but again, I'm not I'm not I'm not going to judge Coach Fry on that harshly yet. We'll see what happens in 2024. Yep. Uh so speaking of, um, you mentioned about how state not really getting it done, especially previous years, recruiting for offensive linemen. Well, not the case where the coach, Coach Johnson, who has been getting it done on the defensive line side, and yeah. he adds another one to he adds another one to his um, long list of um, great recruiting um, recruits. And uh, just before coming on recording here. Uh, Commit Jason Moore coming to Ohio State. Four-star, borderline five-star um, defensive end, one of the best uh, defensive linemen in the country for the 2023 class, uh, coming out of the state of Maryland. If you want to, if you want to feel excited, if you want to feel excited, the eval on him right now are Chase Young comparisons. Now. Chase Young is amazing. So let's let's not, you know, let's let's not put like Chase Young or bust expectations on Jason Moore. That's not that's not fair. Um, but those are the comparisons we're getting right now. Um, he's super athletic at six six two fifty five. Chase Young was that guy then with no muscle. It, it would appear that Moore is, he was a twig in high school. Yeah, and Chase Young was someone who did, you know, need like that first year to bulk up a bit. Jason Moore is coming into or will be coming into Ohio State with uh, his frame more developed for sure. I think he is ahead of Chase Young in that respect. I don't know if Moore has that... What's the phrase I'm looking for here, Kyle? I, he has that, like that. He has that quickness to he, him. The Chase Young, or more, because I, th I think like that. That initial pop, that initial go, that what what, what is the phrase I am looking for here? Um, Acceleration, quick, quick twitch. Like, I, I don't think Moore has that the way Chase Young had that. But for if God's sake, who using, does? If we're using um, track and field terminology, it'd be quick out of the starting blocks. Yes. Yeah. I don't think he has that off the line speed or quickness or acceleration or anticipation or twitch or whatever phrase you want to use here that Chase Young has. But he, but he makes up with that with coming in with more size than Chase Young came in with. Um, but again, like, who does have that twitch like Chase Young has that twitch? I mean, I mean it, that, that was a high first round pick that we're talking about a with Chase very, Young. Very, <laughs> very, very high first round pick. Yeah. The Bosa brothers. Um, I think Joey had... I think, you know, is it almost fair to, I think it's, it's kind of like we're comparing if we're forgoing like Chase Young to Jason Moore, I think it's actually probably fairly accurate to then compare that to like Joey and Nick, whereas Nick came in a little bit more bulked up, but not quite that twitch that Joey has. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's actually fairly apt, um, 
Yep. More is more like Nick. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Um, it's it it is almost. Oh, you more like Joey. You mistyped. Joey came in a little thicker. N Nick always felt more like a. Nick always felt more like the. Um, anchor side defensive end a little bit bigger a little bit stockier a little bit not not quite as fast a little a little more power a little less finesse whereas joey i always saw as more the twitch speed rush maneuver edge guy whereas i think nick was a little bit more like i said could have in some could have better played like a three tech defensive tackle or more the strong side defensive end as opposed to the rush side defensive end. So even if Joey did, if you're, I don't remember you say Joey came in thicker. I don't remember that for sure one way or the other, but who they ended up being, um, Joey was always a little bit more quick twitch speed pass rusher. Watch any game in 2014. Yeah, I know. It's just my memory's not that great. <laughs> so so with Moore's commit here, Jared, Ohio State now has the number one recruiting class for the early 2023 recruiting rankings, just surpassing Notre Dame with Moore's commit. Yeah, Clemson you know, also ahead, made a good ahead jump and, for ahead themselves. And, what's that? Uh, Clemson also made a pretty decent jump. Yeah, they, they jumped up quite a bit. Yeah, Clemson's up to number three right now. They've had a they've had a pretty good um a lot of a lot of commits in the past couple of weeks here. Um and yeah, they're up to number three. Uh Texas has had a really good year. Penn State is coming along here, but I don't I don't really see Penn State getting too many more um commits here. But they're they're hanging there at at sixth right now. But you're, but one thing that a lot of people are starting to really talk about, Jared, if you scroll down all the way down to number forty five, uh huh. You have one of the four playoff teams in Michigan way down at forty fifth here. It does with only ten commit ten commits. And like zero, zero commits in the top 200. What on earth is that gif, gangland? Like, I understand that it's hot dogs and pants and it's a Harbaugh thing. And congrats on finding one where he's wearing khakis. Although that's clearly not Harbaugh. We need to edit that gif so that it's so that it's Harbaugh. Get him a blue <laughs> shirt and then put a Harbaugh face on him. I'm going to need you to get yeah. on top of that. Um. But yeah, but yeah, but yeah, Michigan has not had a really good past few months here, well, few weeks. There are two big um, quarterback quarterbacks in state have gone elsewhere. Yeah, like, like their big one went to uh, commit to Oregon, and oh, I'm trying to remember the other one. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look it up here real quick. Uh, it's a uh, Lloyd Carr's son, or not son. Yes, right. Yes, nephew. Yes. Yep. Um, he went to Notre yep. Dame, right? Yep. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's and they've had a ton of decommitments. So mm -hmm. kids that they had who are now gone. Um. They. I mean, they lost both of their coordinators. Harbaugh was literally interviewing for an NFL job on National Signing Day last year. Yeah, and it's, it's this that, is it's not this is not how a man acts who's committed to the program. How on earth do you walk into someone's living room and say you're committed to the program when you are interviewing for NFL jobs on National Signing Day? Yeah, we we talked about that. What's what's going to be the effect of Harbaugh looking to get out of Michigan and go into the NFL? Well, we're seeing it right now. Yeah, you only have you only have ten commits here. You have zero of them in your in your top two hundred. Your top two players for this year's class is not is not coming to you. Yeah, like like if you look in the state of Michigan, they only have 
two players. Uh, sorry, there's a third at the um, in their tenth um, ranking. So they only have three three commits in the state of Michigan going to Michigan right now. They're not doing. They're having. They're having. They're struggling um, getting their recruits in state to stay in Michigan. Yeah, Harbaugh went from QB guru to I'd rather play. You know, then you know their players would rather play in Oregon. Their players would rather play in, you know, at Notre Dame. Um, yeah, uh, Gangland reminds us that National Signing Day came around. He told the staff to take the week off. Yeah, it's. Yeah. He was convinced, he was 100% convinced that he was getting, was it the Raiders job? No, 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 it was the Vikings job. He was 100% convinced that he was getting that job and he just fucked off. Which says to me that, like, again, like, how can you, he wants to leave. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, their recruiting class has followed apart. Um their coordinators saw the writing on the wall about how committed he wasn't. Uh, it's, it's like he beat Ohio state and then he just checked out. Like mm-hmm. that was it. Like, all right, I beat Ohio state. Finally, I can just fuck off back to the NFL. Yeah. Quest over. Exactly. Man, you saw the way they didn't show up it, in the playoffs just, and you saw the way they didn't recruit and you saw the way that, again, he just was fucking out of it, fucking done. Yeah, it was a total man, it, fluke it just, win. It, it is just amazing just seeing, just seeing you go from your first college football playoff appearance and you would think after that, hey, finally beat you finally beat Ohio State, you finally... You finally win your conference and and you lose so much traction on the recruiting yeah. side. It's it's just amazing. You would think this would be the time that they would be mm-hmm. ramping up, getting mo- I mean, look at Georgia right now. Georgia feels like they're just starting. The way they're recruiting right now, um, they're taking their high high. And they're rolling with it, which is, you know, same thing happened to Ohio State. Ohio State went from like a almost program. And then they won the national title and they've been a, you know, if not quite Bama, no one's Bama, Bama's by themselves. But in that next group of schools, They've been in that next group of schools as far as elite franchises in the country. Mm-hmm. And you can take that momentum. I mean, look at Oklahoma. Oklahoma lost their playoff games, but they still were able to take that momentum that they got from that and their Heisman trophies and bring in quarterbacks and find continued success. Same thing with Clemson. Yep. Once Clemson got over the hump and they stopped Clemsoning, you get that success and you can forward that success into more success. This was the time for Michigan beating Ohio State, making the playoffs. This was the time for Michigan to get over that hump and become an elite athletic program. And, and Clemsoning is back. We'll see. Um, become an elite program, become an elite football team again. And fucked it up. Yep. Bad. Real bad. They could have been on the verge of something. And they... Yep. They still can't out-recruit. I mean, even after beating Ohio State, they still can't compete with Ohio State on the recruiting trail. No. No. So, uh, I'm, I'm looking at their... Oh, I just closed it. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at their uh, their current commit. Their best commit is a running back in state, um, four star, two twenty um, nationally, and then their n- next player is two hundred eighty fourth nationally, and then it just drops down to three hundreds, four hundreds, and lower than like they. 
it's yeah it it is what it is right now and i think a lot of us saw this coming and the effect that was going to happen with hardball um flirting with the nfl and yeah now we see it uh, so so right now i think it, i mean it's it's beyond flirting i think harbaugh straight up left home left the kids left the wife went and proposed to his girlfriend girlfriend tur turned him down and now he had to walk back hat in hand to his wife after already telling him he was marrying the the second girl and then he had to go then he had to go back home that that's what this is it's not even he got caught flirting he he already left <laughs> it's it's much darker than that Kyle I had to make it much darker so Ohio State currently has 18 commits like we mentioned before I uh, think that they have room for what do we say about 24 25 for this for this um, recruiting I'm class thinking, I'm thinking 25 25 here so a lot more big names that Ohio State's looking after here. Still a lot of time left here, but Ohio State, really, really good shape. Uh, not only do they have the best um, recruiting class currently as we're recording this, Jared, but average per recruit, which I think is probably more uh, important than where you end up ranking-wise. Average, your average recruit is number I, one as well. It's definitely something you have to keep an eye on while it's happening. Cause like, I don't know, find, find Bama. Cause Bama is yep. still pretty far down on the list. Uh, I they're, promise they're moving up. They're moving I, up. They're yes, 18th they are. now. They're yeah. 18th. They're 18th. Now they were in the fifties a couple weeks ago. Like, so don't, don't worry about Bama They're They will find their recruits, but where, where are they at on average right now? Uh, they are behind Ohio State. They are at 93.47, and Ohio State has 93.67. Yeah. They, they're they at 19, not because their recruits are bad, but because they just haven't signed many yet. Bama's recruiting classes always start slow. It happens every summer. We take a look at the recruiting rankings, and we're like, oh, look at this. Bama's down. And guess what? They're in the top one, two at the end of every recruiting cycle. Mm. And they just got like the best um, Juco player just recently as well. Um, he was That's a, an odd move a, for Bama. Yeah, it is, it is, it is odd, but I mean, it happens. They, uh, yeah, I, I saw that a few weeks ago. Was it a few weeks ago? No, no, it was recently. It was last week. Uh, yeah, it was a, like a really, um, really strong wide receiver that hopefully, hopefully this will be their um, big playmaker after losing um, Williams. Yeah. Williamson. They had, to, they had to bring in a, they had to bring in another outside wide receiver, huh? <laughs> I think that's it, Jared. You got anything else on the recruiting front here? Um, I mean, Probably not. I mean, there's a lot I would like to look at still. Um, but I, I think it's probably it's probably just time to end the episode. It's, uh, you know, we'll we'll probably do another mock in a couple weeks. Um, but it's just it's a, we're getting down to the exciting part because as as Kyle pointed out, Ohio State is now at 18 commits, which means in theory. The, the recruiting class is almost done. Like. So, so I've got about seven, six, seven more recruits. Seven more recruits. And I just, you know, looking at the, I, I think, I think Tackett Curtis is a guy who I, I still think has a high, high likelihood to come to Ohio State. Caleb Downs, I still feel great about. Jaden Bosno is another guy who I still feel great about. Um. So, uh, Avril Reese telling them, claim your spots before someone else does that happens. That absolutely happens. Um, so it's like, we just saw, we just saw, you know, a run on cornerbacks for Ohio state. 
Um, you know, the weeks before that, we saw a run at wide receiver. Would love to see them get that run in at safety now. If you could get, you know, Bosno and Downs, getting Bosno and Downs would be huge, absolutely enormous yeah. for Ohio State. Um, you know, I'm not as high on Bosno as I was. When I put him in the recruiting class a couple weeks ago, I think maybe Ohio State's lost a lost a bit of momentum there. Um, but if they can still get downs, and with all the other defensive backs they have in the class, um, it's still want Bosno, absolutely. But, you know, I think downs is the real prize there. Um, get Averill Reese, get Tackett Curtis, sort of get that second line defense together. Is, is what I'm, you know, watching a lot. And then, of course, um, has Downs given an announcement date? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, I'm going to check real quick, but I don't think so. I don't think so either, but Kyle will check. Uh, the other guy who I'm, you know, play, paying close attention to still um, would be um, Olas... Uh, Alinen, the uh, the kid from from Sweden, um, that would be an enormous pickup for Ohio State if they think they can get him. Um, it just kind of feels like Finland. Excuse me, Finland. Um, the longer he, the, we were real excited there in the moments directly after he visited Ohio State. Um, and I feel like the longer you think he's going to Bama, see, that's the thing. He's an offensive tackle offense. That's offensive tackles are wide receivers for Bama. Like Ohio state at this point expects to get the best quarterbacks and the best wide receivers in the country. Well, guess what Bama expects to get the best offensive tackles in the country. Mm -hmm. The longer you got away from that recruit, the uh, recruiting visit, and nothing happened, you were really hoping for something to happen soon after, after the recruiting visit. And the further we get away from that without any, and I'm not even talking commitment. I'm talking like strong smoke, like it, without there being like that strong smoke this far away. And my, my hope is dwindling. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. But again, there's there's a lot of other guys who I think have fallen on or fallen off. Uh, Darren Reed uh, ended up committing to LSU. He was a guy who I had in the class. So I think that's probably done and over with. I think Ohio State's probably still in on Walker and Nui Um You know, yeah. Troy, Troy Bowles is still a guy you're watching. But yeah, so I'm just, I don't know, I'm just trying to, toss out some of the other names from the uh, June mock just to give some updates on them. You think yeah. Mateo's um, coming here. I, that is also still my thought. And if they can get both uh, Uyunga Lale and Walker, I think that, you know, completes the defensive line class amazingly. Um because I definitely would love to see them get like a big nat a big nasty nose tackle, um, like Walker yeah. still. Especially because part of me sees Will Smith moving in as maybe as a three tech defensive tackle. So you know you get a starter, a potential starter at all three spots, bringing in those two guys. Um, that would be a great way to finish out the class. And again, they like they need linebackers and they need safeties. So again. Tackett Curtis, Averill Reese, uh, Caleb Downs, Bosno. These are like some of the highest priority guys on the list, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and again, so, like a line in two, but I, again, so, the further so, we get away from the visit without there being serious smoke about him going to Ohio State, the, the less confident I feel about that. Yeah. So um, nothing, nothing coming up about Downs still, but. Yeah, I agree with Jared. I still pretty feel pretty confident right now with Ohio State um, getting Caleb Downs, but 
nothing nothing set yet on his uh commitment date yeah um i yeah i I don't i've never felt while i felt confident i've never felt like it was imminent if that makes sense yep all right jared i think that's it i think we'll go ahead and end the episode right there i think that's a great spot to end the episode um uh yeah uh mm. I don't know. I got nothing. Uh, if you want to join our discord chat, which for those of you watching us on YouTube, we've now like, uh, made a bit bigger, make it a little bit easier to read, um, enabled some gifts in the chat. So we're trying to, you know, because the people down here in the chat, they're members of our discord server. They are also, uh, Patreon contributors. So we wanted to sort of give them a bigger, a bigger spot on the screen. So we've done that. We just sort of changed our uh, on-screen layout here a tad. Um, and if you want to join them and if you want to talk to us as we record and get live reactions from us as we record, um, first you can just come join the Discord server for free. Uh, that's There's no charge joining the Discord server. You can just come join the Discord server. Uh, if you want to do the live interaction thing with us, that is a Patreon thing that would cost you... Uh, at at most three dollars a month you can contribute more <laughs> join us and you can shit talk jared i mean you can still shit talk me all you want it's just you know you get a live reaction out of me this way <laughs> uh but yeah come come join the discord chat again it's uh it's at uh like i said it's at most three dollars a month and you can come like i said join the discord chat and uh, harass me live like, like Gangland does. So, uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I, that's all the, that's all of the that I feel like doing. How about the Columbus crew? Columbus crew is actually starting to turn things Score? around now, Derek. Actually scoring some goals. Three second half goals on the road for a three, two victory, including, um, Cucho Hernandez uh, from um, the Mexican League coming to uh, Columbus in his first game. He gets his first goal in, at um, with the crew there, and what a what a great goal that was, and uh, even better with a with a victory on the road against Chicago. That's fantastic. They've they've now. I'm I'm trying to remember. I, I gotta I have to look here, but they. I want to say they've had a, at least a point in their past. It's got to be like at least five games. I'm looking here. So one, they have one victory, one tie, two victory, two tie, three tie, three victory. So in the past six games, they've had at least a point here. So they definitely turning things around here. And I really, they got a really good striker on the field here. So hopefully we get to see more goals in the second half of the season. Absolutely. All right. Um, Kyle, that's it uh, for the show. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't know what that was. I was spending two straight days outside and my allergies being my allergies. That's what that was. Uh, tonight's ending music will oh, be yeah, Courtney oh, yeah. from. Sorry. Oh, yeah, Jared. Next. Sorry. Next Sunday night. It is hell is real. Yes, it is. Crew versus Cincinnati. So if you if you want to support your Columbus crew, head on head on down downtown Columbus, where where some of that black and gold comes to support that uh, Columbus crew team. What on earth is that gif? <laughs> <laughs> I I having the gifts on screen is probably a, a dangerous choice on my part, but here we are. Yeah. Um, you can see the gifts on screen now. If you're, by the way, uh, one more thing real quick. You won't get too crazy. I appreciate that. Um, thank you. The, <laughs> by the way, um, if you, if you are listening to us through the audio version of the podcast, if it's not been painfully obvious to you in recent weeks and months, we are on YouTube now, so if you want to actually watch us and not just listen to us, that's a thing you can do. Um, since we left the Buckeye Scoop, uh, we've had a bit of issue getting the, the YouTube channel 
visible to people. It's just one of those things that if people don't watch it, it's hard to get people to watch it, like just from an algorithm standpoint. So uh, like when we left Buckeye Scoop, we still owned our own uh, RSS feed. So like the podcast, the audio version of it was not in any way interrupted, but it was more difficult to find us on YouTube because that's where we were getting the super duper like 10x uh, more than 10 X at times, uh, number of our YouTube views. So, you know, we were, we've had trouble sort of translating or excuse me, transitioning people over to our YouTube channel. So, um, even if, uh, even if you still are going to mostly listen to the audio version, I would still really, really appreciate a follow and maybe a like, uh, and a subscribe because you don't, you don't follow on YouTube. You subscribe on YouTube. Um, <laughs> um uh, just head on over there and throw us some love. That would be greatly appreciated. Uh, so with all that being said, uh, tonight's ending music is by a Columbus based band called Courtney from work. Once again, the name of the band is Courtney from work. And uh, with that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Courtney from work.